afternoon. I want to talk to you about some things that I believe in, some things that I think everybody should be doing or at least being more conscientious about. So here we go. I am going to just talk until I feel like I'm done. No notes. So let's hit it. Um, so one thing is kind of my own take on a common belief of to become less selfish, you must first become more selfish. Yeah, you heard that right. I said become more selfish. And so the second point of this kind of advice I want to share is about loving yourself. And it does tie together because you need to be very careful about how you think about yourself, decisions you make, what you talk about, things you're concerned about, um, just, you know, how you go about your life every day, and, you know, how you can protect the energy that you have throughout the day so you can care more for your your partner your family and hopefully you still have a lot in the tank so you can care for uh, a lot of other people if that's something you want to do so um, how do you take care of yourself better well first you have to decide that if you want to do that, then you have to decide, I'm going to do it. Um, something that happened in my life, and um, some of you who know me personally have probably seen this, um, the changes take place in me. So I had an issue with um, weight, uh, being self-conscious about it, but... I figured, you know, it's, I'm in my mid thirties. I'm just getting to that age where, you know, you tend to put on weight and, you know, I thought, yeah, maybe I should change my habits and I would see the weight go away. But it wasn't until I got my first uh, annual health screening from my job I have now that okay, you know what, I'm pre-diabetic. And that does seem like it runs in my family. So, okay, that's a pretty good reason to do something about my health. And maybe you've had a moment like that where you got some kind of news and you're kind of reminded about how, you know, life does end and you never know when you're going to go, you know. So, and I'm also, I'm, I'm super big into learning about um, health, the science behind it. And uh, I was actually just watching a, um, an interview between two neurologists on one of these is Dr. Daniel Amen. Um, maybe some of you have heard of him, but he was talking about how um, brain injuries, um, Alzheimer's disease in particular, by uh, the time you're 85, um, the current state of health in this country in particular, you got a 50-50 chance of becoming an Alzheimer's patient. And you can absolutely do something to prevent it. And also in his research, he's discovered that the decline in brain uh, blood flow activity in particular, that can start at an early age. And so the, the point I'm trying to make is if you have an interest in getting healthier, you need to start now. 
And it's not just about, okay, yeah, I want to get healthier. You need to be specific about what you want to accomplish. You need to know what your risk factors are. And you need to come up with a plan. And you need to start doing things to get healthier. Uh, one of the big things that anybody can do is to get better sleep. And... If you're somebody who thinks, you know, I can sleep five, six hours a night and I'm perfectly fine. Uh, now, there, there's kind of differing opinions on this. Um, some Somebody I follow says it's the quality of sleep that matters more than getting, you know, the common seven to eight hours a night. And I think there has to be some combination of both you know better quality sleep and longer duration of uninterrupted sleep and so you really have to be guarded about your sleep so something uh, that I've done that has really helped a lot is to cover the windows so the outside sources of light are blocked out and another thing is to uh, drop the thermostat to 68, 67 degrees even. And these two things alone, uh, you might find that your quality of sleep, um, how you tell if your sleep is better is you just have to notice how you feel. And it might, it might be that the first time you, you know, black out the windows, and drop your temperature that you feel really good the next day. Um, and that's, that's the main thing is about feeling good. Like if you make changes that are going to affect your health, um, you don't always have to have to, a way to quantify it. Um, maybe that's more frequent uh, checkups with your doctor, nutritionist, something like that. Um, just if you feel good, if you feel better, you know, it's, it, and it's not one size fits all. So you got to find out maybe by trial and error, um, elimination, what works for you. Um, okay. So I said, if you want to take care of yourself better and love yourself more, you need to be focusing on your health improvements by, uh, number one, which would be improving your sleep longer duration and better quality of sleep. And there's there, there are tons of things on, on the internet to look up to get some information on this. Or you can reach out to me and I will tell you what I've been looking at and what works for me. Um, okay, another thing to take care of yourself and if you really do love yourself genuinely. Uh, on that point, maybe you don't feel like you love yourself. Or, you know, your confidence is not where you think it should be. Um, you, when you get your health better, you're, you're possibly going to have that confidence come up as well. For me, especially when I started dropping weight and, you know, obviously I'm, I'm going to get on a scale and I could see that coming down toward my target and even then. I blew away my target. Um, you know, that's a really good feeling. And I had better energy. Uh, that's one thing that I was benefiting from. Okay, um, I want to switch topics a little bit. Staying on the health thing, but it's about what you think about. Um, one of the things that I believe in is the saying, no negativity. And I, how do you avoid negativity? Um, I used to be a really negative-minded person. I was very quick to um, complain about things. Even if it was just self-talk about something around me, I'd be very quick to complain about it. You know, why is this happening? Like, and, and on and on. I mean, you probably have your own version of negative self-talk. But... You got, you got to remember that there are other outside sources of it. 
and something could be, you know, I'm on Facebook and Instagram right now. Facebook in particular gets totally bombarded with even outright false news, um, different things that are obviously negative. And if you don't filter that out, you're going to have to work to filter it out. If you don't and you just let everything come at you, it's it will affect your mood. It's going to affect your thoughts. It's going to elevate your stress. It's going to mess you up. Okay, so Mark, where is the line between no negativity and reality? I've dedicated 2018 to positive thinking. That, my friend, is the way to go. So, okay, you, um, I'm really big on uh, pragmatism. I mean, I, I don't want to, you know, pretend life is all just wonderful and great. Um, so, okay, another way to think of this is how do you be positive and be realistic? Does that... Does that make sense, Mark? Am I on the right path with that restating your question? So there's um there's a difference between reality and perceiving what's happening to you or around you. And so let's say um I'm, I'm I'm only going to talk about kind of a negative topic just for an example, and then I, I'm going to move on to something else. But um, since this is something that affected my son recently about, you know, public schools, threats of violence, um, lockdowns, now, nothing happened at his school in terms of anybody getting hurt. But you can look at that as wow, man, this world is really messed up right now. Like, what is going on? Why is nobody doing anything about this? Or you can focus on, okay, you know what? Yeah, it's it sucks that this stuff is happening. It would really be nice to have some kind of logical understanding, like, okay, this is going to get better. But, you know, I'm really thankful that nothing did happen. In a lot of schools, I mean, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of schools there are or public places, a whole lot of people did not get harmed by, you know, a school shooting or mass shooting, whatever they're calling it now. And I, I could say it like that because I honestly, I really try not to pay attention to the news. I'm not saying that I'm oblivious to it, but I don't make a point of just letting any any kind of news just bombard me at all times. So, okay, so I went over sleep really briefly, and um, no negativity slash positive mindset. Um, okay, one of the things that when I decided I wanted to have this no negativity thing going on for me is just... You, and you, again, this is a super common idea, but just smiling at people as you come across them. Um, we, the brain really wants you to react and mimic. You know, this comes from evolving from apes and monkey see, monkey do. I mean, that stuff is all real. Um, at least I totally believe it's real. And if you smile at somebody, even if you don't really feel like smiling... And I've felt like that a lot lately. If you can just try to smile and just just watch and see how people respond to you. It, it it's, it's such a difference because I used to be, for most of my life, one of these people, I'd, I'd walk, around, walk around in public and I'm just like looking straight ahead. I'm Mr. Serious, you know, serious business. I got stuff to do. I don't want to have small talk. I mean, all these things ran through my mind. And I would even tell people, like, I, I don't get the point of small talk. But you know what? Stopping to make a connection with somebody and just 
to show them that you can acknowledge that, hey, I know you're another unique person. Maybe you've got your own problems on your mind. Or maybe this is the best day you've ever had. But just stop and show that, hey, I, I see you there. It's going to be a good day. So you can you can kind of elevate your own energy by generating it with your thoughts. Um, so what next? Okay, food. Food and drink. Man, that is a huge subject. That's that's the way I look at food and and drink. Um, one of the things that I learned just that since the beginning of this year alone is to think about food as information, and the body as this unbelievably busy, communicating, symbiotic kind of a a microcosm of activity and we have uh, bacteria viruses even fungus in the body that we need and it communicates throughout the whole body and something that was really surprising to me about food and this communication I mean it was really it's a lot to process, and maybe you don't even believe it as I'm saying it to you, but there's lots of research to prove this is real. But anyway, the food you eat, the, the, the drinks you take in, it only takes maybe even a few minutes before you're going to either you're going to remain like feeling good if you already felt good, or your body's going to react in some way. And it might mean that, hey, whatever you just put into your body right now, it's not such a good thing that you just did. But, like, going along with this idea that as, you know, as we age, that, like, putting on a few pounds is just totally normal, or aches and pains is totally normal, it just means I'm getting older, or, like, or I was talking about brain health earlier and Alzheimer's and how we kind of t just assume that because a lot of our elderly are getting these, you know, memory impairment, neurological impairments, that it's just part of aging. But this stuff is all your body's way of showing you that you're probably doing something very wrong and even if you're getting medical attention and uh, they might be acting upon old data or they have seen data to conflict with the the medical advice they're giving their patients but they choose not to believe it so Yeah, I mean, the bottom line is, as I, I'm a person who acknowledges my um, obsessive nature, I choose to constantly keep learning. You got to care for yourself. So let's go back to this quote. To become less selfish, you must first become more selfish. If you want to love people more if you want to love yourself more to be able to take care of those around you better you have to focus on yourself and you might need to look at ways that you've never really considered because you take things for granted don't take your health for granted don't take your maybe your decline in health as just part of life it doesn't have to be that way so, I'm going to end with this. You guys know how to contact me if you have any questions.
have a great night.